This will be the last lesson in this lesson series on object oriented programming in Python. I might add more lessons in this list in future but as of now this is the last lesson. In this lesson we will talk about abstract classes. Let's first see the concept of abstract classes. An abstract class works like a template or the blueprint for the other classes to be defined. Those other classes will be inherited from this abstract class and those must define the methods specified by the abstract class known as abstract methods. Recall that in object oriented programming we consider a class as template or blueprint for its objects since it specifies the attribute and behavior of the objects. Abstract class does the same thing for other classes that is it defines the behavior of the classes inherited from it. An abstract class is not meant to create its own objects it is just used as template for the other classes. Let's see this UML diagram where there is one parent class and two methods are defined in it and it has two child classes as child1 and child2. We know from the knowledge of class inheritance that we can create instances of parent class or any of the child class. Child classes inherit method1 and method2 from the parent class and they can define their own methods and can also override the methods of the parent class. Now let's see how things change when parent class is an abstract class with two abstract methods. Firstly it means that parent class is enforcing the child classes that they must define method1 and method2. If a child class doesn't define some abstract method specified in the abstract class interpreter will generate an error. And secondly we cannot create the instance of the parent class. Abstract class can also have non abstract methods which are also known as concrete methods. Now let's see a couple of scenarios where we should use abstract class. Usually it is said that abstract class is used when a group of developers are working on different classes and abstract class will specify the mandatory methods to be defined in those classes. But in my opinion there are certainly simpler cases where we should use the abstract class even if we are not working as a group of developers. Let's see such cases. Here we have a bank account class. We know that there can be different types of bank accounts. So it will be better if we create an abstract class for bank account having the details which are needed in all types of bank accounts. For example the attribute title, account number and balance are needed for all types of bank accounts. Then the methods like deposit, withdraw, get balance, get statements are also needed in all types of bank accounts. We can have a saving bank account inherited from the abstract class bank account so that it should have the definition of all attributes of the abstract class and it can have its own attributes for example interest rate and method profit. Likewise we can have other types of bank accounts inherited from the abstract class and those must define the methods specified by the bank account class and can have their own methods. So you can see that abstract class is forcing the child classes to have certain attributes and moreover you should see that that we don't want to have a simple bank account created from the parent class. Since each account created should be of some account type and abstract class gives us this feature. Now consider this case of employee class which we had in previous lessons and we created this hierarchy using the inheritance. Note that all types of employees like instructor, lab directors, admin staff etc are actually the child classes of employee class which is at the top and we really don't want to create an instance of the top parent class employee that was there to define the basic functionality common in all types of the employees. So it will be better if you convert that employee class to an abstract class and that will prevent creating any instance of the employee class directly. Here we have another scenario and we will implement this one in code. We know that there can be different shapes like rectangle, square, triangle and circle. We want to create a class for each of these and want to make sure that those classes have area and perimeter method defined for that particular shape. This can be done by creating abstract class named as shape with abstract methods area and perimeter. Then all other classes should be inherited from it and it will be mandatory for them to define these methods. So enough with the concept and let's now see this encoding. We will create a class shape to start with. In Python there is no built in support for the abstract class but it can be achieved from a module ABC which stands for abstract based classes. 
From ABC, we will import class capital ABC and our shape class should be inherited from it. We said that we cannot create the instance of abstract class, so let's try to create an instance to check. and it didn't generate any error. So class shape is not yet an abstract class. To make it an abstract class, there is one more condition. And that is, the class must have at least one abstract method defined inside it. So let's create a simple blank method area. A method will become an abstract method if it is decorated by decorator called as abstract method. And that is available in class ABC. You can notice that as we did this, an error is shown by the IDE. Let's run the code and it is type error saying that it cannot instantiate abstract class shape. So we achieved first feature. Now let's create rectangle class inherited from shape. It doesn't has method area defined, so let's see if we can create the instance of this class or not. Again you can notice error indicated by IDE. And if we run the code, you see this error that can't instantiate abstract class rectangle with abstract method area. So we must have area method defined in the rectangle class. Let's first define the init method with L for the length and B for the breadth of the rectangle. And then define method area. Now we will be able to instantiate the objects of rectangle class. An abstract class can have non-abstract methods. Suppose we create a perimeter method as non-abstract method and let's just keep it blank. And you can see that we can have rectangle class without perimeter method. Now let's discuss that for abstract method, should it always be a pass statement or we can have some logic inside it. Let's simply add one print statement inside this method. If we run the code, you will see the same previous output. Basically, the method area in the rectangle class has overridden the method area of the parent abstract class. But if we want to use the logic of abstract method inside the child class, we can use super as we did in the simple inheritance. The none is printed since function is not returning anything and we use that inside a print statement. One quite useful practice is that we have some logic inside the abstract method of the abstract class like this print statement and in child classes we can use that and extend the logic further like done here. So line number 13 will call the area method of abstract class on line number 4 and then line number 14 is the extended logic we want to do for the rectangle class. So now you can see output corresponding to area method in abstract class and the extended logic of the rectangle class. Now consider the example of bank account class or the employee class, where other than method attributes, we have some data attributes. For example, title, account number, etc. And the child classes can have more data attributes. Now how to implement this? The data attributes are set inside init method so for such cases, we will create init method in abstract class with compulsory attributes and then child classes can extend that for more attributes. Let's see that for shape class. For different shapes, we have different attributes. For example, for rectangle, we have length and breadth. For circle, there will be radius. For square, there will be side. 
so we don't see some common attribute. But for demonstration purpose, let's say each shape must have an attribute with the name units to specify the units of the length, like centimeter, meter, or inches, etc. For that, we will create init method in shape class and will just set the units attribute. Now in rectangle class, firstly we must have init method which we already have and then we want to have units as its attribute. And to set the units, we will be calling the shape class method. And for the other attributes, that is length and breadth, we will set those here. So this completes not only this lesson, but also the lesson series on object oriented programming. We tried to cover almost everything needed to be good at object oriented programming. You should practice as much as you can and good way is to code a complete project featuring different aspects of object oriented programming. Thank you very much.